that involves the Is there an the Inferno church. book? Yeah. I actually tried to look around for it, and I couldn't find it. Oh, well, yeah, it, it's it's out because the, you've got the movie coming out, so, yeah, there, there's a book. Okay. I, I actually thought for a second there they were just adapting the, the third book and just calling it Inferno. No, there's, there's an actual book called Inferno because it is... What people don't realize, the Da Vinci Code is part of a larger series of this yeah. character that Tom Hanks plays. I don't, I haven't read any of them, so the, I don't the know. The Robert Langdon series, yeah. Yeah, and so that's, it's part of a larger series, and so they've just been keeping it going because they're a nice mid-range franchise that they don't have to spend nearly as much money on since it's and more let's, serene. let's just be honest, Ron Howard likes working with Tom Hanks. Yeah. Because uh, he'll, he'll look for reasons to... I'm just trying to make it more reachable for you, dude. <laughs> well, yeah, basically... And so basically that would be, that's kind of the best way to compare Metal Gear is that imagine 24 if it was given to Dan Brown. Yeah, That would exactly. be the best way to describe it because a lot of it is about conspiracy theories and... That, that actually is the perfect explanation because, it, you know, this is basically saying that the military never stopped its arms race, that it always continues to evolve. I mean, because we'll, we'll actually get to a point, Alex, where soldiers are infused with nanomachines. Well, yeah, and I mean, there's you know? like so infusing with nanomachines, the idea of ID tag weaponry. I mean, we see it in four... We've even seen it in things like Skyfall, where the pistol Bond has is coded to his palm print so that only yeah. he can fire it. Yeah. And people are trying to find a way to do that so that way if, say, in Afghanistan, if a U.S. outpost is overtaken by insurgents, whether it's Desh or any terrorist cell like the Taliban, if it's ID tagged, they wouldn't be able to basically seize the weapons and ammo and be yeah, able to use it for themselves. Yeah, they'll just click endlessly. Not um, even click, it'll just lock up. I mean, I would probably go the more cruel route where if someone who wasn't a soldier tried to use the weapon that they would probably detonate a small explosive, but that would probably violate the Geneva Convention, and... Yeah. That's just... That's the weird thing with me. That's I come something with... that the Metal Gear universe would do, though. Yeah. That would be another explanation on why they lost uh, why they lost their arms or things like that. Yeah, but then it's also you got people, especially after having seen War Dogs, where there's also the concept of the war economy, which is a reality here... Mm -hmm. It, not just in the United States, in the world, because sadly, there's money to be made in warfare. I mean, you've got companies like Halliburton, Northrop Grumman. I'm trying to think of Northrop Grumman. Sorry, sorry we have to stop this. Or I'm going to have to say the line. I'm going to have to. War has changed. Yeah, because like, I mean, War Dogs literally opens with the whole with an opening monologue saying, if if anybody tells you war is not about money, they are either naive or no, or no. lying. There's, there's it's kind of the way they put it. It's like they're either in on it or they are naive. <laughs> Because it's true. I mean, given how much we spend on our military here in the U.S. compared to other countries well, around the world, here's, here's the bottom line: is like the best line I could ever I could ever reference to people is uh, from actually the first Iron Man: is that war not only is is an economy, but it also fuels innovation. So at that point, innovate like yeah, that's how some we end basic things that you get in your everyday life came from military. Yeah, the of, internet, for example, was initially created by DARPA. Yeah, so at that point. To, if you if you don't think that the that war has fueled technology here, you are kidding yourselves. Yeah, and like pro even stuff like prosthetic limbs that came from the Nazis because they were trying to figure out how to reanimate dead bodies. Yep. And so the concept of prosthetic limbs came from that, and various like medical advances, what like technological advances, space like a lot of things NASA uses for space travel. There's a reason mm -hmm. they hire Air Force pilots as astronauts and not just random people's because because they've received a, de a degree of training that they're going to need. Mm-hmm. Because uh, uh, as much as people don't want to admit this, space is actually a very hostile environment. Yep. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it's a good thing that we currently have, like, an actual, like, treaty ratified by the UN and all the nations that prevent nuclear detonation in space. But, I mean, think about it. If you've seen the kind of damage that anything like orbital strikes can actually cause, and not even just, like, oh, lasers. I mean, literally just okay. dropping a big, heavy rock from space, you can cause a lot of damage and not have any radiation. That's how scary that is. Mm-hmm. That's why they specifically have a term called kinetic bombardment. Where they there we really go! Just... Yay! We killed... Sorry, I, I, I interrupted because we killed the hind knee and proved our awesomeness. Or actually, Romney proved his awesomeness. Yay, Romney! Yeah, I was yeah. able to prove my awesomeness while giving you a lecture on, well, how exactly. scary the world is. I love the fact that, that Metal Gear, like the Metal Gear series, we just went all philosophical on your asses. <laughs> yeah, but that, that's kind of the appeal of it, because it, it, unlike other games, because people still have this idea that games are strictly for kids, even though they can be pretty powerful methods of storytelling if put in the right hands. Now, Kojima may not necessarily have the greatest grasp of how to tell certain stories regarding certain ideas, no. but... Well, that's why, he, I mean, some filmmakers just won't ever get how to be able to tell this in the storytelling medium, yeah. or at least in the medium that they're in. Or at the very least, they'll have, like, a set opinion about something, but they yeah. won't necessarily understand 
how to actually... Like, they basically won't necessarily do the research to actually understand the other side. That's why you end up with filmmakers like Michael Moore, who heavily edit the interviews and everything so that they can basically say whatever the hell they want. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And okay, the so the next thing that we need to actually take care of is actually getting a parachute. So, mm -hmm. um... Next time on Gaming with the Philosophers. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. This is a game with not, not to be anymore. confused with the philosophers who existed in the Cold War in the Metal Gear oh, universe. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> we, we brought it we full the word circle. Philosophers, because the philosophers actually has a, a meaning in the middle in the Metal Gear universe. Dude, sometimes sometimes it makes me like almost feel bad for Alex because he doesn't know the, the Gordian knot that he's just walked himself into. <laughs> he really doesn't. Okay, so yeah, we need to get a parachute. Um, boom, boom, I'm not boom, sure. Boom. Where it is. Let me see if I can find it. Parachute, parachute. We got the mine detector. Do we do we still have it? Mine detector? Crap. Okay, so we need to go back and get that. It's on the roof. Um Hostage. Remote control missiles. Ground floor. We're halting this philosophical discussion. So that I can get this thing done. Uh, Darn it, snake! Pick up your phone. It's like, boss, you boss. already told me everything. <laughs> boss, you literally are just repeating the same things over and over again. It's starting to annoy me. I mean, seriously, you you can't be that lonely, can you? <laughs> snake, what's the best brand of paper towels? Bounty, <laughs> always bounty. <laughs> this one says, "It's best. the quicker picker upper, boss." <laughs> Well, this Damn it, stop it! Stop it! Oh my god, this is great! <laughs> this brand says best around. This brand says best in town. <laughs> Damn it! That's like, but around boss. what, boss? Around the it world? It says it's brawny, but is it really? Because I'm very brawny, <laughs> and it doesn't look very brawny. <laughs> this bottle says Mr. Clean. Does that mean it'll clean my kitchen floor for me? <laughs> Damn it, we've got jokes of galore here. Oh, and Thanks I for up. saving me. Oh, cool. Uh, no, we, we already got this guy, so he's... Well, yeah, it's just I, we didn't rank up last time. Yeah, yeah, we got a rank. Awesome. Yay! We're a three-star. Well, we still haven't achieved the rank of Fox within the Foxhound unit. That's the funniest part is, like, there's only one person that's ever hit the top rank in Foxhound, and that is Gray Fox. That's the name. And Although... Yeah, he got kidnapped, and we had to go in and save him. Yeah, of course... The cannon gets kind of weird because, well, yes. portable ops. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of problems with portable uh -huh. ops. I mean, Kojima said that the core story is canon, but you can very much tell it was made without his involvement because they tried to give a backstory to Gray Fox. And I mean, I mean, at the very least, it feels like a Kojima story because you know, psychic twin with like psychic girl with split personalities, ultimate soldier, and all that fun, fun stuff. Yeah. Okay. That was I not what I have to do a manual search. People are probably hearing this on my mic that I am searching on the walkthrough. Oh. I should have pulled out the rations. I mean, I ended up killing a rocket guy unintentionally. <laughs> that was pretty cool. <gasps> yeah, get used to this, people. That, that's the thing with a lot of these older games. You die okay, a lot. Okay, so... Over by where we fought Machine Gun Kid. Hide behind a wall, blah, 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 blah. Use remote control missiles to kill him, which we did. After the boss fight, use card one to enter the door in the north part of the room. And here you will find a parachute. So... Basically back to where, where we killed Machine Gun Kid. Who wants a case of knuckle sandwiches? Sandwiches? Oh, here we go. Okay, so yeah, now I know where we need to go. Uh, we need to go to floor one, the, the one with the cameras right up, right away, the blue tiles. I'm not a good navigator. I'm sorry. <laughs> I can't navigate things. So yeah, I think we pretty much ha hammered these into the ground, like wh whether or not it would be a good idea to do a Metal Gear movie, what what we would do to improve the uh, the DC Cinematic Universe. I hope we got we answered you guys' question. Well, yeah, matter. although there is probably one question they're probably wondering, and that would be, who would we choose to play Snake? Because that's... I, I can't answer it. I yeah. really can't. Yeah. I mean, there's been some actors I've seen that could pull it off. Because here's the thing, I love David Hayter's voice, 
I wouldn't cast David Hayter to play Solid Snake. Yeah, I mean, although with enough makeup, he could kind of look the part. It is very much a case oh, yeah, of cause, it. Because you have that, um, for those who don't know, like in Metal Gear Solid 4, you have that little Easter egg where he's dressed up like Snake. Um, so you, you can do it. You can make him look like it. But, I mean, we're talking about a guy who's supposed to be like super, super buff kind of thing. Well, sort of, because... It, because that's the thing. Snake's design changed over the years because in Metal Gear's one and two, he's meant to be buff because that's how the action stars in the eighties were. Were big buff. You had Stallone, you had Schwarzenegger. But then when it came to Solid, he, the character was redesigned because he realized, well, you can't have someone big and bulky sneaking yeah. around. They need to. His exact words like he needs to be like a cat, someone who's like thin and lanky, so that yeah. way he can actually like move, like maneuver about quiet, quietly. And thus, why Snake was redesigned for Solid to be a lot thinner. See, so I go left. Um, I'm gonna get slaughtered for this, but an, but an idea just barely came to me. Um, Henry Cavill as Solid Snake. No, oh, wouldn't be my first choice. I can kind of see it. He's got kind of the the jaw and, and everything like that that he would need. And I would say like if he stays as buff as he is in uh, in Man of Steel, then you'd have that covered too, because I think he would have the build for Solid Snake. Or he could, honestly, he also could have a, a build for a number of other Metal Gear characters if you decide to incorporate them at all. Yeah, it's just kind of what I see, kind of out of my choices, out, out of people who've been considered. I mean, a lot of the top two I've heard has been people like Christian Bale or Hugh Jackman, both of which I think could pull off the role. But yeah, yeah. I mean, one choice, and it's a choice that people debated whether he would play Big Boss, Solidus, or Solid Snake, and that would probably be Viggo Mortensen, because especially if you look at how... I mean, someone did, like, a Photoshop mock-up showing Viggo Mortensen with kind of the eye patch like Solidus, and it was a dead ringer for Solidus Snake, and given that yeah. that the clones are supposed to look alike, I'm thinking, hey, maybe have Viggo play Solid Snake. He'd do a pretty good job. For those of you who don't know, that's the guy who played Aragorn in Lord of the Rings. Or, um... Oh man, he's got he's got quite the history now. Well, yeah, he's been in a lot of movies. It's just that's the most mm -hmm. mainstream role people would yeah, know him for. Like, he, I mean, he recently had a film come out called Captain Fantastic, which I still need to see because it's hard to see indie films, mm -hmm. given that I no longer work in the downtown area where the fancy theater that shows indie films would be. But he's a really talented actor, and I think he would be an interesting choice to play someone like Solid Snake, especially when you consider if you're wanting to get away from kind of the 80s-style action film and get into the more cerebral, philosophical aspects of Metal Gear. Or even, I mean, Vigo would also be a good fit if you wanted to do, like, Liquid, Liquid Snake. He'd be, a, he'd be a good fit for that, too. Yeah. Um, now, I'm, I'm actually going to irritate Metal Gear Solid fans. No, I would not cast Kiefer Sutherland to play Snake, Solid Snake. What I, I, however, I might cast him to play an older Big Boss. Well, yeah, because that's the big thing I think people need to understand is that because Solid Snake and Big Boss are two different characters. They look somewhat alike, but they've lived radically different lives, and, yeah. well, they obviously are not going to look exactly the same because of the lives they've lived. I mean, Big Boss went through a now, lot. Sorry, Alex, I would not give him the southern accent that you have given Big Boss. <laughs> you, um. you have completely disrespected the greatest soldier ever. Oh, no, you fell! <laughs> you fell off the bridge. Oh. Okay, so here's what you need to do. Go, don't go up the elevator just yet. Go left, go right. Go right? Yeah. Oh, okay. Not into the basement. So if you go, I think it's to this floor. No, so go back into the elevator. Up one. And here is where, this is the floor you get the parachute on. Oh no! It's okay. So go down instead of uh, to the right or to the left. Although now I want a, a live-action movie where every time a Snake punches somebody, they just go. Ur, ur, ur. <laughs> okay, so to the left, I'm guessing. Uh, no, go down. Okay. Because you have to go to the room where you fought uh, Machine Gun Kid. Yeah, which I, I don't know why. Just whenever I hear that name, I just think of Jim Kelly. If Red Sensors me? Yeah, there we go. Well, yeah, because the cigarettes can do the same trick as well. Okay. Except they take away your health. Actually, not in this one. In this one, they don't. It wasn't until Metal Gear 2 where they actually have it take away your health. Because hmm. notice. thought it was like a shred of your health. Nope. So you want card three, and you want to go to the door on the left. Here. 
Yeah. Just gotta wait for this guy to get in line for an. I'm a red match. trooper. I I sit here and shoot stuff. So I'm important and stuff. You guys don't know. That's my that's my random soldier voice. Okay, so that upper door, that upper corner door. Okay. And it needs card one. And this gives you the parachute. So at that point, you can you can jump off the bridge with the parachute equipped. And I believe just go straight down to the ground floor again. Uh, or to the courtyard area. I guess we need a different key card for that. In general, yes, it's so. th uh, actually it's four. Okay. So we don't even have it. Maybe this is going to take us on the journey to get card key four. Yeah, it's really hard to, to come up with a solid snake. I... Yeah, I mean, just can't imagine anybody because I would want them to be able to fulfill the style that Kojima later yeah. realized. But at the same time, Kojima himself is even not completely attached to people just trying to copy him. I mean, with Twin Snakes, they initially yeah. recreated all the cutscenes as they were in the PS in the PS One version, but he told the animation director, "Hey, do it the way you would do it. I, we don't want it to be the exact same. We want this to be new and different for the fans. So mm -hmm. go ahead and reanimate the scenes the way you would direct them if you were directing this movie." And so he did. Now, people kind of debate whether or not, like, the cinematography and voice acting is better in Twin Snakes or not. There's kind of a debate back and forth, especially since some of the voices of the characters can more or less change. Not because they couldn't get the actors back, but because they had to retool the voices so they didn't shoot out their vocal cords, like with, okay. like with poor Hater. So I actually just got this wrong. So you don't want to go to the bridge to use the parachute. After the, the, yeah, the area just, after the hind. Yeah, the area after the hind, I figured that was just me not being careful and yeah. falling to my death. Well, I thought you could use the parachute there, too, but no, it, it's actually saying you'll, you'll die if you do. Yeah, maybe because I'm guessing just just thinking in the terms of the geography of the place, you probably just in terms of the of where you are, you probably don't have enough time to actually deploy it in order to land safely. That's kind of the in-game logic, I think. Yeah. Because, I mean, deploying a parachute is not as simple as it looks in the movies. I mean, yeah, if you're with the right people who actually show you how to do it properly... It can yeah. be deployed, but if you're doing it in a panic, it's pretty easy to screw up and accidentally break things and, well, not have a parachute. Oh, not not, not break things. Shatter them. Just absolutely oh, shatter I wasn't them. Mean, mean, <laughs> I was just meaning, like, where you would say pull the wrong cord or pull the cord the wrong yeah. way and end up, like, breaking the mechanism that's supposed to deploy it. Oh, dude, I mean, I mean even in essence, like, pulling the cord, you're going to get a sense of whip, whiplash off that. Yeah, because... So. Because what's happening, there's this fan, funny little thing called terminal velocity, uh -huh. where basically where it, what terminal velocity is, is that that's basically what happens when the, the kind of the force, the drag from like basically the fo force of the wind pushing against you and the force of it pushing behind you. That's when they basically zero out and are, you're basically following at a rate where not, there's nothing to cushion you, but nothing's pushing you down further. And that's what terminal velocity is because that will kill you if you fall after getting to that point because yep. nothing will cushion you you will basically splat and once it's not so much that the fall itself kills you it's when you hit the ground and all that force is basically coming up against your body that's what uh -huh. kills you it's not the fall it's the sudden stop yeah exactly it's, it's just like the CSI episode tells you man versus gravity man lost well yeah and it's the same case with I mean people have seen Matt Pat's hookshot theory and how the yeah. G-forces can really mess you up if you're not careful, and that's why the idea of a hookshot is just physically impossible, because if a hookshot actually existed, you would have people more or less getting killed, because if the force of the hookshot didn't rip your arm off, it would, well, kill you when you actually got to where you were hookshotting to. Get away, Romney! <laughs> Shooty Christmas, man! Uh, I think it's part three, yeah. And now we just gotta kill everybody. Knuckle Bring it on, bitches! It's like knuckle sandwiches. Line up right here. You don't get your choice of mustard or ketchup. The only <laughs> condiment is blood. <laughs> I was gonna say, is the only condiment pain? <laughs> oh, pain. That's the bun. Pain. Oh, okay, the bun. pain, pain is, is the bun. Pain is the bun. You maybe we, get some we tea. We need to stop talking about hot dogs because then I start thinking about that that horrible movie that came out just a couple of days ago. Sausage, Sausage, Sausage Party. Yeah. People actually did ask both me and, and uh, Shadow Blazer if we're going to go see it. And I'm, I'm going to tell you guys right now, no, we're not. I'm not interested at all. Like, if, if Alex wants to go see it, that's his deal. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm not interested at all. 
And I'm trying to think, did you actually do a review for it, Romney? Uh, no. It was between Pete's Dragon and Sausage Party. No, that's right. You did Pete's Dragon. Well, sort of. I recorded the review. It just wasn't a very good review, so I'm sh I've am i shelved it because I couldn't really make an actual concise argument in like for or against Pete's Dragon. Because it's hard when you have a movie that you just feel meh about, and the only thing that really bothered me in the case of Pete's Dragon is how the story was structured, and really, that... Like, having one issue that bothers you does not a good review make. No. It, it's one of those things that I was... I, I was I've was i been really torn on seeing the new uh, Pete's Dragon, because I don't like the design of the new dragon. Um, I don't like the fact that they've taken out... At least from what I can tell from the trailers, they've taken out the element that, that Elliot is the only one that can see the dragon, that everybody else well, can't the, see the, it. Well, the character is Pete. Elliot's the name of the dragon. That's right. Sorry. Pete, Pete and then Elliot. But Pete right. can, Pete's the only one that can see the dragon. All right. I have the parachute equipped, so let's see. All right. So everybody cross your fingers. Hopefully this doesn't kill us. Whee! Yay! This I'm is not... seriously it. <laughs> it's like, we. We. Boss. We. Oh, and doggies. I'm sorry, random argument here. What is what? Is, what was with early video games and dog enemies? They were easier to animate. Yeah. That's really all it is, that they were easier to animate. You didn't have to do as much to actually, like, because everyone knows about the whole release the hounds yeah, joke please. from various, various sources. But that literally is just, oh, I mean, look at the amount of frames. You literally need, like, two frames to get those things moving. Yeah. Okay, let me see if I can actually figure out what that uh, area was or what what uh, card key you need for it. Uh, uh oh. I think this thing ran out of maps. Uh oh. Um, oh no. Well, that means, well, let's okay, see. Okay, I'm going I'm oh, to do see. this on the fly, people. Well, let's see if we've got anything in these trucks. Uh oh. The oh, moved. transportation. This is actually in the uh, ah, in the first the NES game. Well, yeah, that seems to be what it does. That seems to be the way to reset. Where if you don't have, the, I'm guessing we need card key four. Given that I tried all three and none of it works, so that's what we need. Yeah. Time to make the long trek back up. Okay. Metal Gear MSX maps. The Video Game Atlas. This will help me, right? That's an atlas, it should. Unless it shrugs. Exactly. What if Atlas were to shrug? Well, then you end up with a very, very messed up philosophy. Yes. Which people think, oh yeah, like objectivism, everyone out for themselves. And it, it's funny, you see like conservatives like rally around it, even though Ayn Rand hated Reagan, hated a lot of things that Republicans currently stand for, so... <laughs> there's that little hiccup. Basement floor one. Okay, so... Building one to building two. Floor one, maybe? No. Rooftop, basement. Building one to building two. No! Oh no, wait, wait, let me see the map again. <gasps> this might actually be it. No, it's not. Okay, so I know I was already here because I got all the stuff. Oh, I think I have an idea what I'm supposed to do. That's probably why we have the cardboard box. Let's... Let's a sneak -a past these guys. Nope. I'm officially lost. Okay, wait. I'm officially lost, boys. I have no idea. Okay, now I'm now I'm back on track with where you're at. Oh, did we die? Uh, no, it's just that the, the truck drove us back to basically the beginning of the area. Yeah, because... And so that's why I'm just... that area. What the heck? 